In this lecture, we're going to enable Remote Desktop and then we will confirm that appropriate firewall ports are open for it. Then we'll take a look at sconfig and what configuration options we have from there. We can enable Remote Desktop from Server Manager here. We simply just go to the local server and we can see that Remote Desktop is listed in here and it's currently selected as disabled. So all we have to do is click on the little disabled link here and it's going to bring us into system properties right to remote desktop. So all we have to do now is select allow remote connections to this computer. It's going to tell us that firewall exceptions are going to be enabled, but we're going to confirm that in a minute. So we'll click OK. And we want to make sure we leave this checkbox on. Allow connections only from computers running remote desktop with network level authentication. This is important because it's much more secure this way. Now if you have a lot of legacy computers, even some older Linux computers that do remote desktop into Windows servers, you may have to uncheck this, but ideally you want to leave this checked. We can also go in here and select specific users we want to grant access to be able to remote into this server. I'm going to leave this at default just because we don't have any users configured on this server. So we'll click cancel there and I'm going to go ahead and click OK and it's now enabled. Even though it's showing disabled here on the desktop, we can click it and confirm again. It is actually enabled. The desktop screen just not has not refreshed yet. So now that we've enabled this, let's make sure that the firewall ports are allowed. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up firewall. So Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. And we're click on here on the left on inbound rules because these are the rules that either allow or disallow traffic into our server. So if we click this guy and then we start scrolling down here, since they're all in alphabetical order, we will see remote desktop. And there's a couple additional ones here, but what we want are the three that are part of the remote desktop group. And you can see they're already enabled. If they weren't, we could simply click them, right click and choose enable. In this case, it's saying disable because they're already enabled. So perfect. We've now configured remote desktop on our server. So let's now take a look at sconfig. We can just close this window and we can, we'll go ahead and just minimize this one. And sconfig is a very powerful and useful tool that I really love for initial setup and configuration of a server. This tool is useful to learn super easy to learn because it can be used not only for Windows with a GUI but also server core when you have a very limited interface. To get into sconfig all we have to do is open up a command prompt or PowerShell as an administrator. So I'm just going to open up PowerShell here as an administrator and then we just simply type sconfig and you can see we're brought into server configuration and there's a lot of options we have here. We can change the computer name, we can add it to a domain or a work group. We can configure remote management. We can even do our configuration of remote desktop from here. We can do our network configuration from here and we can also initiate Windows updates from here, which is a great thing to do. You can remote into a server, initiate Windows updates and just let it roll. So sconfig is a really powerful tool to use and to learn and get familiar with because you can use it again across Windows Server with a GUI or Windows Server Core. In the next lecture, we're going to go over roles and features within Windows Server 2019.